Thanks everyone for being here. It's beautiful. It's our first time in Portugal. So hopefully we get to meet some of you after. Matt Flagel, I got your name right. Yes, you did. Do you want to ask me a question? You wanted to do this other um, one? Just curious how you got into music journalism. Okay, so I really, really wanted to uh, know the bands and know their music and interview them. And this guy from a radio station where I work with uh, just sent me a message through Facebook and said, you want to come work with us? And, and it was it. It because so you I just did it. And I just did it. I think through Facebook, you know, social media. Do you like social media? Um, I don't have Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. I was forced to get a cell phone from my girlfriend at home. Like, forced, basically. Um, otherwise I wouldn't have a cell phone, I don't think. Um, I don't know. I don't like constantly being attached to this little device on your palm. And you don't like, like, uh, seeing what people have to say about you? No. <laughs> that can be terrifying. <laughs> Not necessarily terrifying, I just don't... Old fashioned, I suppose. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, a lot of people lab label you as post punk. Do you like that label? Because I feel like there is such a rage of sounds uh, in your album and in your music that it feels kind of res restrict. Yeah. Um, post punk, I think, is okay as far as the label goes. I feel like it leaves you lots of breathing room. As far as genres go, like post punk spans a lot of very different sort of sounds. <clears throat> um, like one post-punk band doesn't sound very close to the next one. You know? So I, I feel like it leaves, it leaves a lot of room for breathing um, as far as going in different directions goes. And I think it's fitting. I mean, I'm, I listen to a lot of that kind of music. Um, and I have for a long time, so I'm okay with it. Yeah. So you and, uh, you and Mike uh, came from women. And uh, did the uh, Monty? Is that how you call him? Yeah, that's what we call him. <laughs> Monty and Daniel when it's they not came. His name. I don't know why we Scott call him Monroe. Him. Yeah, yeah. Monty. So, yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna call him Monty. Too. Okay. Uh, when they came into the picture, him and Daniel, did it change a lot to your 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 music, your sound? Um. Yeah. I mean, we all kind of came from similar backgrounds. Similar, but also, I mean, everyone kind of has their own. Um, their own styles, of course. So I feel like Danny brought in a little bit more of just sort of like a punk thing. He's very like energetic. He listens to a lot of very like aggressive music, more so than than I do probably. Um, Monty brought in a lot of very good things as far as just production goes. Like he's he's a music nerd. He's listening to how many dBs this is and what you know high mids and stuff. And, Stuff. Yeah, and he knows like what synthesizer this is, and those are things that I don't know at all. So I feel like it's a good, well-rounded bunch. Yeah, and did you have any like preoccupation uh, because you only have seven songs on your album? Was that like uh, you had any preoccupation about the vinyl quality? Um, I don't know if, if it's, it's half half that those seven songs just kind of worked the best together, and half because we're vinyl nerds and like you yeah. start to lose sound quality after after you get too much music on there um, which is important to me I don't know you have like a vinyl collection um yeah it's pretty decent um we pick up a lot of stuff on the road it's funny I actually don't buy too many records on the road because we never have time to shop but I get recommendations from people that I meet all the time and then when I go home I like look through my notes and I'm like Spend all my money on that. <laughs> spend all your money on that. That's a good way to spend. Which isn't much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we should go shopping together because I don't have it either. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's forget about the money. Balance fashion until yesterday. But uh, how did you feel about the show yesterday? Because it wasn't a lot of people. Because you had like Patty uh, Smith uh, oh, was, playing at the same time. It was fine, I think. We were. I mean, we flew in, went straight to the festival, and played. 45 minutes later, so it was kind of hectic. I like, 
I like getting somewhere somewhere where we're playing earlier so you can kind of sort of take it in and um, get comfortable with the situation. I thought, we, I thought we did okay. I've seen you in Barcelona. Yeah. I was there. Uh, and I, I've seen you the day before the show at the Apollo room. And I was completely blown away. It was super awesome. I love that concert. And uh, actually, uh, you know, the, the starting song of the album, uh, Newspaper Spoons, mm -hmm. that's such like a buzz. It's just like, you know, a shock. It's like those the, the mic drums are just incredible. And how did he come up with that? Because I, I love Mike, you have to tell him. I truly, I think he's uh, one of the best uh, drummers. Uh, it's, it's funny because I, I'm playing those drums on that song. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. That's cool. Not <laughs> to take any credit, Mike's, not to take I, any credit away from, from, Mike. from Mike. Mike is great. Because I, uh, yeah, in Barcelona, it was like, oh my God, I was totally blown away by him and his energy and oh, the drums. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, I love him. He's, uh, he's an awesome drummer. I've known him since we were seven or eight years old. He's, I guess, a couple years younger than me, but we grew up in the same neighborhood. He was like a block, lived a block away from me. We used to get into trouble as yeah. teenagers a lot. Can you tell us one one big oh. trouble? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, Funniest one. there's some funny ones. I mean, those, those guys got arrested many times. I never did because I'm too smart to get caught. Yeah? yeah. You, you have a clean sheet? Clean sheet, yeah. which is <laughs> surprising. One of you has to, so that you can get the others out. Yeah, I mean, we used to just always be lighting things on fire, and you get, once you start getting into that <clears throat> cycle, it's dangerous. It's but the fire cycle is <laughs> lighting things up on fire. <clears throat> yeah, it's, they're little shits, basically. <laughs> is it true, like, that incident with the guy and, and the van on one of your tours? Mm, oh, I, I've read that. Backed over a guy, yeah. That um, was a bit of a stretch. We were in New Orleans. And I was driving, and it was like freak. It could have been a freak accident. Thank God it wasn't. But I was parallel parking, and this guy was walking along, probably like stumbling along like this. There was a pile of horse shit in the street. He slipped on the horse shit, smacked and hit his head on the on the pavement just as I was backing up. Like one in a million chances. Uh, You're just describing a South Park episode. No. <laughs> Real life, That's cool. but basically these people are like whoa, 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 and I heard the sound too. And Mike jumped out of the window of the back car and like picked him up and set him aside. But so close, almost killed a man. You should put that on your biography. <laughs> almost killed a man. On Wiki what, Wikipedia, but you don't go. You, you, no. Wikipedia, it's no. acceptable. It's, it's right? acceptable. It's all the time. Yeah. I use it to to to, to learn. And you know that Wikipedia is absolute truth. Yeah? 100% absolute truth. It is Would you go the there bottom and, line. and just add, you know, I almost killed a guy. <laughs> and say, you know, it was me. So I go, who? Well, I could. I think you the, can't do that. the thing with Wikipedia is Wikipedia. anyone can go on there and write yeah, anything, I right? Yeah. I'll think about it. Okay. So, and you, you like really funny uh, live. Like make all, uh, jokes. I, I, I've uh, I've heard the one in Barcelona. I really liked it when you talked about the selfie sticks. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he said like you can have all the selfie sticks in my concert, but the band's coming uh, after us doesn't like it. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but is it something like to do with the crowd, or is it just, just, just goofy people? Um, we're pretty goofy people. <clears throat> Generally, pretty lighthearted. And the music's pretty dark, I think. So I think it's good to have a contrast. And we don't take ourselves that seriously. No, I mean, when we're playing, we take it seriously, like, in within the song. Um, but outside of that, we're just dudes. <laughs> <laughs> and you have fun. Yeah. Because the, the lyrics kind of, uh, it's mirrors of that, too, because you have, like, really dark songs, but then the lyrics sometimes are really ironic. Yeah, I mean, they're, a lot of people think they're dark, and I'm on the brink of suicide or something but they're they're meant to be taken with some humor actually can i, I i'm just going to tell you one episode of mine with your music because you know i've been like through a health problem like one and a half years ago and it's it kind of ended uh so, yeah i think it is and uh once i i've heard your album and uh, the pointless existence song oh yeah that one sentence you say you know if you're lucky you're gonna uh, 
Yeah. And I just laughed so much because when I was going through that, I just thought about that, you know, exact, exact, exact the same phrase, you know. And sometimes people think that phrase that's really dark. But I think it's really no, it's, funny. No, it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be funny. It is. I don't know, because really, when it comes when it comes down to it, at the end of everything, that's like the best case scenario, you know. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. And do you have like new material? Are you are you going to record studio soon? We have two weeks booked at the start of July. So at the end of this tour, like, we have one more show in London tomorrow. I fly to Toronto, pick up our van, drive to New York. Maybe two more weeks, kind of in that area, and then we have two weeks in Toronto to record at the start of July. So, and we have like 90% of a record written. Ish. I have to go through my piles of pages and napkins and things and like sort of glue some of the words together, but um, it's close. We'll see. We'll so see you can expect goes. an album next year? In an ideal world, yes. We'll see though, because anything can happen. <laughs> and how do you, like, your, your song, your music's not that approachable immediately, but you made a breakthrough so easily and so quickly into a mainstream crowd. And Did we? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Maybe here. Maybe here. Yeah, maybe here. We, we, but, you know, you, we feel like you're going to so, so many festivals. Yeah, there are kind of mainstream festivals. We've been invited to some bigger festivals, and it's, it's surprising for me. You think it's because of Continental Health, too? Um, maybe. I mean, it's, I don't think that that's a poppy song at all. It's very catchy. At the same time. Yeah, I suppose. I mean, I'm like screaming like unintelligible shit the entire time. It's like it's basically just feedback and me screaming, but I don't know. But it kind of cut on. Yeah, that's fine. I, I try not to question it 